All right, we're going to get started. Just a couple of quick announcements. All of these panels are being recorded and burned to DVD. You can buy them for $10 shortly after the uh, panel, right back where the T-shirts, the 2600 gear is being sold. I highly recommend you pick one up so uh, we break even. Um, <laughs> on that note, these conferences are a very positive vibe. Um, but there are always one or two people that try to make it unpositive. If you see anybody doing something that they shouldn't be, please find a security or uh, number two type person uh, because there are folks that seem to enjoy coming to these events just so they can steal laptops and ham radios and things like that. And that's definitely not what this community is about. So to the other 99% of you, thank you. And to the 1%, you suck. Um, this is a citizen engineer, consumer electronics hacking, and open source software with Philip Tyrone, who is number 106. Yeah. He's very proud of his number. Um, and Lady Ada, who is number 80. All right, uh, yeah, citizen engineer. Uh, we're going to show you how to make a taser so when you see people doing bad things, you can shock them. Um, <laughs> well, For only $5. Yeah. It's just cheap. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, so I'm Phil Torrance, senior editor of uh, Make Magazine. Any of you guys see Make Little Magazine? Yeah. yeah? All right. Yay. Good. Got some subscribers. We'll be selling some makes down at the vendor area later. Hopefully, we can break even, too. We'll give some away. Yeah, we'll give some away. We're going to give some away, too. Q&A. And uh, in the past, I, I worked with uh, 2600 on uh, the Free Kevin stuff, and then I also founded uh, Hackaday site with the collection of a lot of things that uh, people build in their basements, homes, and, and, and other places. I'm Lady Ada. I'm uh, currently an R&D fellow at iBeam, which is a new media gallery actually here in New York. So I live here now. And I basically feed Google by making electronic projects and putting them online. And you know, a lot of them are open source, and there's kits. So people build them. So anything that I present here that you like, you can get full documentation on uh, ladyada.net, or you can buy some kits at adafruit.com. So I can also break even. <laughs> yeah, it's all about breaking even today. So uh, citizen engineer, it's kind of a term that uh, it gets tossed around a little bit. I think open source hardware, it might be a new term for a lot of folks out there. I mean, everyone knows what open source, open source, so open source software is, and the benefits, and how it's kind of started. And people started building things on top of things and sharing and documenting. But citizen engineer is a little bit different. And what I like to do, uh, I, I carry around a set of slides with me when I present at conferences. And like lately, I've been presenting at like knitting conferences, which is bizarre. But um, I carry around these slides of uh, kind of a look back in history when everyone had to build stuff. Uh, there wasn't distribution. There wasn't the type of things that we have now. You couldn't just like order something on Amazon. If you had a TV or a radio or a car, you kind of had to fix it. So um, I collect these old covers. Um, this is uh, from Popular Mechanics, 1961. How to build this safe sidewalk car for your kids. That's really unsafe, actually. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, lead acid batteries. It's Little Timmy. Like, that's a big problem waiting to happen. They're on the brink of hell. Yeah. Um, scientists on the brink of hell. That's still true. And uh, make your own printed circuit boards. You know, you can still do that. But uh, this is kind of the type of things that people used to build. The, the plans were shared. Um, these magazines, Popular Mechanics, Popular Science, Modern Mechanics, they were the most popular magazines for a really long time, like millions, millions of copies. This is what everyone read. And like, things have changed a lot since then. Now, like People Magazine and, and other things. Oh, this is a good one. Escape shoots can cut our airline death toll. <laughs> this is what we need. And if you look really, you can't really see it on here, but that guy is like, like everyone's happy. And they're all like, yay, we made it. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is this might be a good way to fight like future terrorism. Uh, just have a jack seat. Uh, suitcase size power cycle. So complete plans. Uh, how to do a safe job of rewiring your house. Um, at Make we have a lot of projects and like we're like I don't know if it's gonna last forever, but we show people how to wire stuff and like everyone says like oh are you worried about getting sued? Um, you know hopefully like one day maybe something happens, but hopefully we can always refer back to this and say like wow people actually used to do things like rewire their home. It's crazy. Uh, can, Criminals beat the lie detectors. Uh, they could. Uh, this is my favorite one uh, that I love showing around. It's a motorless glider copter you can build yourself and tow with your car. <laughs> like, and like that's the you know like Timmy's down there waving to his dad like this is such a bad idea. But uh, 
but people actually used to build these. Like this is, we had a different type of imagination. We're going to the moon, every, you know, there's a big space race going on. This is what we wanted to build. Uh, I'm from Seattle and uh, we still haven't got a monorail, so it's kind of a letdown. Uh, but things like how to revive your old TV picture tubes, what to do when your furnace quits, like this is what people thought technology meant. Like what, what can you do with it? Over millions of copies of this issue, they're very proud of this. Um, another one, Gar uh, garage door opener for $35, this is a fun one. Um, a lot of you probably heard of the case of the garage door opener company stopping people from making their own garage door openers because the, the codes were copyrighted. So it's like, what? You know, this is uh, 1963. They'd laugh at you. They're like, what are you talking about? Um, this is the, one of the world's safest cars. It's just because no one bought it, I think, and it's really <laughs> ugly. But, you know, like, it's safe, though. And, uh, and I'm going to talk about another trampoline project later, but uh, here are two free blueprints for trampolines. Like, trampolines now, like, they're their lawsuits ready to, ha ready to happen in our nanny nation. But uh, you know, people used to build these things. Uh, 3D carving duplicator for $10, uh, image slide projectors, backyard plans, uh, and also bounce tumbling in six basic steps. Uh, what, what's going on there? Uh, you could build this row mobile. <laughs> I can take it down this crazy path or something. Latest invention, air mechanics, shop kinks. They used to call things kinks a long time ago. Kind of funny. Radio kinks, shop kinks. Uh, make your own one-man sub. <laughs> Yeah, maybe. And uh, this, is a, this is a good one. You can make a little radio so you can listen to uh, radio while you fly on planes. Now you really can't do that. And a Geiger gun, so if you wanted to see how much radiation was around. Um, these are some other books I collect. The Boy Mechanic, 700 Things for Boys to Do. That was like a really popular thing, like only boys build projects, but that's not true. Uh, the, this is a really good book. Uh, there was a time where all the chemical formulas for like Coca-Cola, and anything that you could buy, like perfumes, they would have this, uh, this documentation on how to actually make it yourself. You could still find like copies of this book, and uh, BitTorrent is a wonderful place to find um, these really old books right now too. Foxfire book. Uh, these are there's a lot of books that are pseudo copyright or not really. Uh, log cabin building, uh, snake lore, faith healing, moonshine. Like a lot of people used to build all this stuff. There's a Foxfire book series. Uh, just you know, hit BitTorrent and find some of these. Forgotten arts and crafts things to make. And then we hit some dark times. Like, I'm not exactly sure. I think uh, after World War II and we, there was a lot of mass production, uh, certainly electronics uh, from other countries hit. But uh, you know, the 80s and 90s, like, everyone kind of stopped buying stuff for a while. And it, it really hurt, I think, everything that we started the nation uh, as the hackers and tinkers. Like Benjamin Franklin wasn't a, you know, he was a tinker, like, and he's on money. So th those were some dark times. And, but things started to change, and now, uh, especially when you look at some of the sessions here, uh, it looks like things that are in the physical world are starting to become uh, the, the code that you can use for the stuff you make. And, and by that, I mean, if you look at like the AM radio, it's kind of a neat example. Like you built this, but the, the actual pieces inside of it were the code that ran on it. And there's other examples out there. And I think one of the things that happened uh, in the 30s and 40s and 50s, uh, television came along later, but the AM radio was a really neat example of everyone built one, everyone had one, everyone did something with it, there was big cabinets around it, everyone shared it in some way, and we have something happening right now, and there's like little pieces of evidence that things are, are changing, and the MP3 player is a good example, I mean, how many people have like an MP3 player, like absolutely everybody, yeah, so it's kind of like, and although you didn't build it, it is kind of like our transistor radio, because there's just so many of them, so we're starting to see all sorts of weird projects, this is uh, the Pez MP3 player, uh, this guy actually worked with Pez and uh, decided to build his own MP3 player. And it's a Pez MP3 player. He licensed it out, got it, selling it, and you can get it online. And he documented the whole process. He tried to open source parts of it, but he, he couldn't. Uh, this is the MP3 card reader. This is a $9 MP3 player. It's actually even less than that. It's like $5 now. And you can put it into other projects. So it's almost cheap. Um, this is my iPod collection. I was doing some iPod firmware <laughs> tests a little while ago. Um, these are some weird accessories, and these are, you know, people are putting Linux on uh, iPods, and each generation gets better of the type of things that you can do. So the, the actual hardware itself is interesting, but the type of things that people are doing on top of it are, are even more interesting. One example is I wanted to do audio recordings, and so I put iPod Linux on my iPod, and I was able to run around and do high quality audio recording. The, the hardware was disabled shipping, and you can put iPod Linux on there, and then do higher quality audio recording. And then you can also record your phone calls with it, which is good. Um, people started to play around with the graphics. So this is uh, the, the boring do not connect, 
blinking thing. And I use projects like this to get kind of the younger kids into electronics and, and into different pieces of technology because they, they really don't know how to build stuff. It's not something that's taught. And you know, maybe there's a, there's a few rare examples of kids that are, are doing something with uh, electronics. But uh, everyone wants to do something custom. They want to customize it. And once you customize something, it's, it's more important to you. Uh, and so we released a bunch of how-tos <laughs> on, uh, how <laughs> on how to change your firmware, yeah. And um, I'll mention this a few times, that every single slide that you see here has a how-to behind it, and we're giving away all these how-tos, so at the end of the presentation, uh, I'll give you the way to download all these. So if you want to change your firmware, if you want to build any of these things, all these how-tos are out there. That's a, that's a fun one. Um, you know, other things, uh, the inventor of TV Be Gone is here, and uh, there's a presentation tomorrow about subversive technologies. And uh, there's a ton of fun projects with that too. I recorded the, the IR sound that came from the TV Be Gone, and then I put it in my iPod, and then I have a sound to IR converter, and then it loops constantly, so then I'd walk around Best Buy, or, <laughs> or, or, so I, or maybe someone did. Uh, and uh, like CES is a good place to go to because there's lots of TVs. It just loops and turns off all the TVs. Um, even the boxes, so lot, one of the stats I used to throw around, there's, there was eight million iPods like the first year. Now there's eight million iPods a quarter, and like no one talks about these boxes, or even the, like, what are people doing with these? So I made an iPod box robot. So with old I discarded iPods, you can make your own little robot, and uh, he moves and stuff. Um, another fun thing that happened was uh, as technologies retire and reuse is a theme in this. This is a uh, I, this is a Walkman iPod case. Um, funny story behind this: Sony sued this guy. Uh, they get, they sent him a cease and desist because they said, you know, you're you're really uh, confusing everyone. Um, <laughs> We don't want people to think we make crappy players that are really big that no one buys. Well, Sony makes crappy players that no one buys. Um, so the way around this is we, there's a how-to. So you can post how-tos. He just can't sell these as um, products anymore. So that's a fun one, and you know, the, it's a good project case. Anyways, um, old mice. Like everyone has like drawerfuls of old mice, and you know, what do you do with these? Well, this is a uh, an IBM mouse uh, FM transmitter. So, you know, with your shuffle, plug it in. Uh, other creative things that are happening, uh, charging solutions. This is one of those uh, hand crank flashlights that you can charge. And that was round one. So, okay, uh, let's get the, let, let, let's show how to modify this existing piece of technology uh, with the crank and then charge an iPod. But wait, there's more. Oh, we'll, we'll put it on a bike. <laughs> so now the guy pedals around and recharges his iPod. Again, every, everything's documented and there's lots of neat improvements on this. Um, this is one that I had. Um, it takes forever, though. It's like four, it takes like 14 days. But uh, <laughs> if, uh, if, if our world political problems continue, I'll have like the last way to listen to music. Um, and uh, e even things that aren't quite uh, meant to, to be tinkered with you know, right away. So the iTrip is an FM transmitter. And one of the first things people said, oh, you know, I wish the range was a little bit better. So we have a how-to on how to crack it open. You just wrap wire around the little antenna and you get more range. Uh, fun things you can do if you go to a gym where they uh, broadcast uh, uh, the TVs over FM so people can listen. Uh, I went to one and there was like Fox News, so I decided to just play my own stuff. And you know, <laughs> it's kind of fun. Uh, or you can go the other way. And uh, this is a megaphone helmet hat. <laughs> and uh, you can plug in your iPod and just uh, walk around or any music player. Uh, so what's going on here with all this stuff and why is this actually happening? Uh, this is an unfortunate slide. Uh, this is, oh, these are all these crazy Web 2.0 companies. Everyone, XML and RSS and like all these like, everything ends with R or it's like some weird name and like all these companies are gonna be gone next year. But uh, the good news is uh, a lot of the things that they're doing are, are helping sharing the information. We've got wikis, we've got Flickr. Um, you know, Flickr is actually one of the most interesting places to share your how-tos right now, and it's only because it's like a cookbook, uh, the, the way it's built. Uh, we have new devices, there, there's cheap hardware, easy access to documentation. The way that uh, things get sent out there, like right away, uh, there's when a recipe is interesting and people know about it, we all probably saw the Mentos and Diet Coke uh, thing. Like every, so here's a fun how-to, guys. Take Diet Coke, put a thing of Mentos in it, and it explodes. Yay! <laughs> easy. Um, Mentos decided to do a contest about it. Uh, Coke, uh, Coke decided it was freaky and they're scared. Mentos went the other way. And they're like, no, send us your videos. So, you know, that instantly went up on YouTube. It instantly went around the web. So it, it's getting interesting. It, it, there's things that are happening. Uh, and the other thing, we have a ton of shit. Like, we have so much stuff. Like, we have so many cell phones. This is, uh, this is an artist who takes photos of cell phones that people toss. And yeah, you can recycle them and everything. But like, what can you do with this old hardware? Like, that's 
crazy. Um, and we're getting mad. Um, one of the things that happens is you know, consumers, and customers, or whatever you want to call them, are starting to fight back. What's been going on the, the, the web recently, you know, the AOL phone calls, you know, someone trying to cancel their account. There's a site devoted to customer, you know, people not happy with the way they're buying things. We started this thing, well, if you can't open something, you don't own it. So, here's the Bill of Rights. So we started like sending this to companies, like I just send this randomly, and like, so, like they don't really respond. But uh, like, Here's some of the things, so no, special tools, like I, why do I need to buy a special tool to open my thing? Like, okay, like maybe once in a while it'll, it'll make sense, but don't, don't just make a special tool that I have to buy because I want to open up something. Like Torx is okay, but like don't ever do tamper proof. Um, some things like if it's something can be replaced, make it replace like, you know, the power, the power things that go in those always go on laptops. Um, laptop power supplies, wouldn't it be great if they all worked the same? How many times have we keep buying the same, different ones for different laptops. Um, power from USB, like why doesn't everything work, you know, anything that's rechargeable can go to USB. Standard connectors, um, if it snaps shut, it shall snap open. Screws are better than glues. Um, docks and drivers, like every company, please put your stuff on archive.org, like if it's drivers, like how many old things do we have and we just can't find the drivers so it's useless. Um, documentation, put it, there's storage, storage is free now, just get it out there. Um, metric or standard, not both, and like schematics, like, Right now, what we're doing at Make is any type of kit or anything we build, um, we're including schematics. Um, we use stuff, same thing. Um, all our stuff comes with schematics. And that kind of leads to the return of the kit. Things, things that are happening right now, because people have access to all sorts of different stuff, because there's online stores, because there's international shipping, there's some kits that we're starting to see that weren't available before. So this one, uh, it's a paper, it's a, I'm sorry, a plastic cup recorder. So you can record your own voice onto a plastic cup, just like a record player. Here's an old-fashioned radio made out of tubes. Uh, RFID, there's tons of, R there was an RFID session here earlier. One of the neat things about that, it's cheap, easy to get, so we started releasing projects. So we're like, okay, so RFID, you know, everyone else has it out there, what, what can we do with it? Well, here's a simple project on how to make uh, a, a door opener, so you can just wave your RFID badge and you can get in. But, of course, what did people do right away? They decided to put an RFID uh, tag in their hand. So just like you'd expect. Um, so here's a project that you put the reader inside of a keyboard, and as you go up to the keyboard, it'll uh, unlock your password. So uh, you don't even need to log in anymore. You just put your hand near it. Uh, the vulnerability being if you get your hand cut off. You know. <laughs> I mean, you've got it's other. Like a denial of service. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's denial of service, and you've got other problems. Um, and then of course, what do you do once you have an RFID? Um, implant, well you make a trampoline that can only be activated with your hand and when you jump on it, it shoots flames. So this is a, an RFID enabled uh, flame shooting trampoline. Of course. of course, like what else are you gonna do? And this is the type of thing that would probably be on one of those old magazines I showed, like you know, why, why would you build this thing? Um, so fun stuff. Uh, and you know one of the themes, and I mentioned this before, is like once you start to create stuff and, and mod it. Like I have a digital camera that's really old, it's really crappy, but I soldered in a new chip that makes it take photos. Like the second you turn it on, just keeps taking photos. I like that digital camera better than my, my good digital camera because I made it, I did something with it. Uh, Nixie tubes is another new example. Like these are really, uh, this is old Russian hardware and they were used for all sorts of things, scientific equipment, medical equipment, I mean all sorts of like hardcore stuff. And now they're just all over the place and you can buy them, like go on eBay, and eBay has RSS feeds now, you can just like put in uh, Nixie tubes, just keep buying them up, because like eventually they might be gone. But people are making clocks, wristwatches, all sorts of things. Um, one of the other things that happen is uh, candy and Altoids, and all of a sudden we kept seeing all these projects. So people would eat these mints and like, wow, this is a nice case, I should do something with it. So people take their old mouse and they decide to make an Altoids tin mouse. Oh, that's a project. Uh, this has a camera that's uh, mounted on top of an Altoids tin and uh, it's screwed in and there's a big strong magnet so you can put your video camera on top of your car and drive around and be like fast and furious and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm a little worried about that. Uh, this is a really good one, a little LED switch. You flip the switch and uh, you can go to raves. Yeah. <laughs> and just LEDs in general uh, used to be what? It's like a dollar at least for a red one and a blue yeah. one would be like four bucks, like even five years ago. Yeah. And now you, there's a session and you're gonna make them and throw them on things. They're so. free, <laughs> like people have them stuck to them. You can just th literally throw them away. So um, this is where I come in. So, you know, what can you do to take part in this? Well, the reason that I think that we have an opportunity here is that um, electronics got a lot cheaper and true, there's more surface mount parts, it's harder to solder, but on the other hand, 
you, know, you can get an ARM core chip, which is like a 100 megahertz computer, you know, it's like this small for five bucks. It's like so cheap. Another thing that's really nice is because open source software is already really established, you can get open free tools. GCC has been ported to a lot of microcontrollers and microprocessors. So pretty much anyone here with a software background, and I have a software background, like I was a software person, you can just start like programming stuff and, and you know, like iPod Linux, for example, like people, you know, reprogram their iPod, or um, I'll show some more examples later of, of things you can do with free tools. But basically, you know, in the internet, you know, you don't have to use a Thomas register anymore. You can get circuit boards made for 30 bucks. There's open source circuit layout tools. And this is just from an electronics, you know, point of view. There's probably other tools available. Um, so that's kind of nice. I mean, this stuff has always been around. It's just really accessible, again, because there's wikis, there's YouTube, there's Flickr, you know, there's so many ways for people to connect. There's Instructables, which we'll talk about also, which is a way of sharing projects. So, I mean, I think it's great that almost anyone can just get into this. I mean, even if all you know right now is PHP or HTML, it's, it's really not hard, and there's tools and kits out there for you to learn. So that's kind of nice, you know. It's, it's no longer like wire wrapping. It's, you know, you can buy a kit for 50 bucks and just get started. So, um, I kind of did that, and I, sort of what I do is I make kits, and they're educational. Um, you know, you, you get like a bag of parts. Uh, bag yeah, of parts over there. Yeah, get one of those. And uh, you know, LEDs are cheap, so this the, the type of uh, project like this. Uh, this is the mini key kit. Over. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you can get little bags and they're full of electronic parts, and you solder it together, and then you can plug it into. This one's a, a USB charger, the one that I showed before. It has a parallel port on it. And you literally plug it into your parallel port. Yeah, not a lot of computers have them. There's a serial port version now. And then you can just download free tools, AVR, GCC, and then reprogram it and make the LEDs blink. And so it's kind of neat. Yeah, and so I don't know if you can see it, but it says make zine. And so some people, um, can you switch over? So people like put it on their bikes, which is kind of neat. And you bike around, it's like, cool, you know, that's, that's nice. And this guy got kind of political. He, he, this guy actually. Uh, that's the San Francisco version. No, this is actually, he, he was in Washington, D.C., and he said that people looked at him. It's a John Deere bike, if you can see. It's kind of cool, too. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah. that's weird. Uh, <laughs> you know, but, you know, you, you know, you can program the message, that's kind of neat. You know, there's probably people in the audience who've actually bought this kit, it's like 20 bucks, and like it costs like $5 in parts. You can actually have, it's the schematics are online, the code's online, you could, you could get the parts for free and build it. And some people do, if you look on Flickr, they're like so cheap, they don't even send me the 1750, they get a circuit board and they solder the parts together on the circuit board themselves, and it's fine. Um, so I made a bigger version for a bike wheel also, so it's like the same thing, but really big, and I have it, and I don't know if you want to yeah, sure. demo it. So there's a, there's a magnet that attaches to your bike frame. It's just like an odometer, but backwards. So the magnet's on your frame. So you can see that this is a biohazard. You can't really see it because it has to be on the wheel, but you know, believe me, it works. So I rode around, I rode around Burning Man with this Pac-Man and a ghost, and like it would go pack, 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 pack. It was, it was kind of cool. Like, some people, had bad trips or something. Um, so like another thing that I did, it, it, what's interesting is because these tools are so inexpensive and, and with, with not a lot of education, like this project is actually a data sheet. I, I just copied the schematic. I didn't do any thinking at all. I built my own USB charger for an iPod and people really like this. It's a good beginner project. And what's nice about this is it's more efficient and better engineered than almost anything else in the market. Like I just assembled the Griffin once. They did a good job, don't get me wrong, but because I'm not constrained by, oh, we have to make it as cheap as possible because our margins are so low. You know, I can, I can make, do as good a job as I want and just say, like, oh, here's the parts. And it's a little more expensive, but, you know, because there's no marketing and advertisement, you don't have to pay over this overhead cost. So, and it's in, in Altoids 10. So we have one up there. And, then, you know, you put two batteries in, and you can run your PlayStation Portable or your iPod. And yeah, and come up after the talk or uh, at the vendor booth. We'll probably be building a few, and we'll give them one. Yeah, you can, like, we'll, we'll have a couple kits at the vendor booth if you want to get one. And we'll have a soldering setup, so you can sit down there and just, like, build it. It takes, like, 20 minutes. Um, so this is a, a sort of like my final project. So this is, a, uh, this is actually really interesting because this is sort of like an extreme version of open source hardware. Um, if anybody here is a musician, you've probably heard of the Roland TB303. 
If not, it's, um, it's a really famous synthesizer that was manufactured in 84. And unfortunately, um, it was meant to be an accompaniment for guitarists. And like nobody used it because it was like, it made really weird noises. But then um, somewhere, I think in the late 80s or early 90s, um, I don't remember exactly who it was, but a bunch of people started using it to make acid techno. And um, it just exploded. It was huge. Like everyone needed a TB303. And they originally, they were like a couple hundred bucks. And then now you go on eBay, you type in TB303, it's $1,000 minimum. But what's really nice is that um, you can't copyright hardware. This is really great because it means you can reverse engineer hardware. And as long as there's no patents, and in this case, there weren't any patents, well, there was one, but it was actually released into the public domain by Moog. Thanks, Moog. Um, you can, you know, I remade the exact schematic circuit diagram, made a kit for free, open sourced it, and like, I have a couple hundred people who own these, and it's really neat because I, the sequencer is all open source also, and people actually went and modified it. This is amazing. Like usually you buy, you buy a synthesizer, that's it. You, you've got it. It does what it does. If it doesn't, then you have to buy another one. One of my customers really wanted to have swing timing, which is when you have a sort of on the 16th note, sometimes it's a little bit before, a little bit after. So it gives us a jazzy feel. Um, and this one, the original 303 didn't have it, and this one didn't have it, and he said, I want to add it, and I said, sure, there's the interrupt, go do, try this, this, and this, and see what happens, and he successfully did it, and then shared the firmware with other people, and they uploaded it, and so there's a couple people out there who have upgraded synthesizers, and that's, like, couldn't you, do, if you could do that with your VCR, your TV, like, every time you're like, it's broken, I, I'd want to fix it, but you can't, and you can do that with Apache, and you can do that with Mozilla, and you can do that with, you know, any open source software, but you can't do that with hardware right now, because it's so closed. So, like, that would be really neat if you guys kind of start doing that, and we could together make open source hardware reality. Uh, one of the, uh, so we've been trying to do the same thing. So we have a, a make controller kit, and we decided to release all the schematics. And it's basically, like, anytime you want to control any type of device using your computer, a good example would be, like, an ambient orb. Let's say if you wanted to have, um, like, your instant message client uh, change the color of, um, oh, yeah. Uh, if you wanted to have it change the color of a lamp in the, in the room, um, uh, so, uh, and a lot of people, when we uh, announced this kit and we did the article, they're like, oh, I would do it a different way. And it's awesome because I said, yeah, please do. You know, like, okay, you know, here, download the schematics, download the firmware, update it any way you want, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, it's a, it, it's a first experiment in, like, a full-blown kit that could be used just about for anything. Uh, and again, this is all, all the information about this is available for, for download, and you could build your own or, or whatever. Uh, this is that camera I was talking about. So uh, it's a 1.3 megapixel camera. It's like the old lunchbox size Olympics, ones that like, we all have, like we've all bought, and it was like $500 at a time. And uh, I took it apart, and I'm like, you know, uh, it'd be really neat if I could do something else with it and then get other people to start doing other things with these, because there were so many of them. Well, I, I looked up on, uh, there was a market share uh, report on like which ca cameras were out there when they first, uh, digital cameras first start chipping. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of these, good. So um, what I did is I took this little timer chip, it's a 555 chip, it's like most common like little electrical component out there. And uh, I started playing around until I found that I could rewire the switch to uh, automatically take photos as soon as you turn it on. And it uses this old smart media, like this big like flash card. I don't even know that they sell them anymore. But I'm like, there's no other use for this thing. And I don't care if it breaks, I don't care what happens to it. So I'm like, okay, I know what I could do. I could put it on a kite. <laughs> So I, uh, I tied it to a kite, and uh, it went up and up and up, and, uh, and, it, and it crashed, and it survived. And this thing just won't die. So I started to, <laughs> like, I can do other things with it. So um, I was uh, looking at Amazon's A9 um, search engine, and you can type in an address. And what they did is they drove around with this, like, really expensive car with this GPS and this camera, and they put all the, those, those dots or photos they, 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 uh, they took. I'm like, you know what, I bet you I could do my own version of this. So um, I took a GPS, a little handheld, and I took my camera that automatically took the photos, and the GPS logs as a pretty standard file and has a timestamp. And the camera takes photos, and those photos have a timestamp. So all I did is I mashed those together, and then I made my own version of, of A9, and this is just me driving to the Apple Store. Eh, I mean, <laughs> it's like, it's all I really got to do. Um, other examples, uh, earlier today there was the, the, the disposable uh, digital video camera, and we're finding people are uh, using these projects. They're light, they're easy. Um, this is one of them right here. And, uh, any of you guys see John's talk earlier? Yeah. yeah. John's awesome, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's scary. So, um, this is the <laughs> USB mod. And um, so right away, um, here's some other ones. The best one is like kids. 
some of the photos are great. What happens, people take these photos and they put it in a Flickr group and then everyone learns about it and everyone wants to take photos like this. They're really neat photos. Um, other things. So um, yeah, rotary phones. Um, it's kind of a sad story. So I bring this, this is my cell phone um, that I bring with me everywhere. It's like, it's awesome at restaurants. Um, and, uh, about rotary phones and it's just a sad, yeah, it's just kind of a, a sad story. When I bring this places, there's a little kid and he put his hand in it, like his whole hand, he's like, I don't, is this, what type of game controller is this? I'm like, oh man, this is bad news. Um, so yeah, this is a rotary cell phone. Uh, what you do is you gut a, a regular cell, a regular um, rotary phone, which you can get, there's, you know, garage sales are actually the, the best place for them. And uh, SparkFun Electronics, who I'm gonna, I have their link in the back, they sell all the components that you need. And you basically just rewire it, and the signals from the, the, the dialer get stored. And um, what I'm gonna try to do right now, um, um, I'm gonna give away something cool. I, I'll probably give away that Roomba. So uh, I want you guys to get your phones out, and the first person to get to the phone uh, will win. It's uh, 206, 355. One, three, two, three. All right, now if we have signal, it'll ring. Oh, we got a winner. Hello. Who, who is it? Jacob Applebaum, you can't win. Wow. You want a hack Roomba. I'll, I'll show the hack Roomba in a minute, but anyways, you want it, so. Now what's gonna happen is this is on DVD, uh, and people watch it, I'm gonna get phone calls forever. So. <laughs> so, if you guys come to the talk tomorrow, we'll, we'll show you how to build cell phone jammers, so this isn't a problem. <laughs> so now you can't call, because the cell phone jammer's on. Hopefully. And neither can anyone else. <laughs> Anyways, so here's uh, an inside view. Uh, the, the, the interesting thing about this particular phone is the, it lasts forever, like if it doesn't ring, but once it starts, it really drains the battery. Like that's a mighty ring, and I even have it turned down. Uh, movie theater is a fun place to take it to as well. <laughs> so those are the components. Uh, VCRs, how many people have VCRs? Yeah, what the fuck are we gonna do with all these VCRs? There's no, there, there, you can't even get VHS tapes anymore. So we thought about this. We're like, we're gonna figure out something to do with a VCR, and we figured out you can make a cat feeder out of it. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it looks like a cat grinder. <laughs> but it depends how you feel about cats. So 420 every day, the cat gets fed. Uh, and this is what it looks like. Again, it does look like a cat, cat food grinder. Uh, or a cat grinder. So um, you just email me, like the schematics are, it's easy to build and there's the motors and like it's, it, it's good and cats like it. Um, iRobot I makes these uh, robotic vacuums and uh, does anyone have one of these by the way? Yeah, a few people, okay good. If you look there's a little tiny port on the side that you can just pry off. So like a little old Mac connector. And um, one of the things that uh, we talked to iRobot about a while ago was, you know, it would be great if uh, people could start getting into robotics without having to do all the awful things about robotics. Um, if you've tried ever, ever to build a, a robot, you do all the locomotion, like, yeah, I got it to move, and now I'm tired, and I don't feel like doing anything else ever again. <laughs> so you don't get to, like, ever focus on the actual robotics parts. So um, they decided to release their open interface, and uh, you can make your own um, USB to serial connector. Uh, the other way to do it, and I think I have the connector somewhere around here. Oh, oh Bluetooth. Yeah, here it is. So this is from um, a bubblegum container. Yeah. And uh, this is the old Apple serial connector. And it's uh, a little cheap uh, Bluetooth part. And you can use your phone or you can use uh, any Bluetooth-enabled computer to uh, control, oops, control a Roomba. And there's like a ton of projects. So, 
already we're starting to see uh, an entire community built around it. There's a book coming out. I think it's like uh, Roomba Hacks or something. And uh, the how-to, again, it's already out there. It's, 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 it's being used. Uh, p kids are using these robots as something to learn about electronics and programming. Uh, it's super easy because it's dumb. It's just a serial interface, so you're like, go, and it goes. So you can like do logo, like real logo. Um, <laughs> a couple of shots of it. Uh, someone made a, a MIDI interface, so you can use it as a MIDI instrument. That's kind of fun. Uh, I've taken this to, uh, yeah. So I take it to, um, to bars, and I'll bring two. And it'll be uh, human versus uh, regular Roomba. So the, the Roomba there next to the red ball um, is, is in cleanup mode. It's using its normal algorithm to move the balls around, and it thinks it's vacuuming. And then the human tries to beat it. And like the, the robot wins most of the time. So human doesn't win. Uh, we also started an underground Roomba cockfighting uh, tournament. <laughs> So uh, that's kind of neat. Uh, and you can only use stuff available at like, you know, off, in office settings. And uh, that's kind of fun. It get, and like there's money involved. I mean, we've done, there's betting. And then um, there was a one time, um, we decided to do real life Frogger. That, um, that was a very bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've ever been to Austin, it's pretty laid back. <laughs> and they didn't really care too much. And the cops came by and just like they ding ding ding. They're like, oh, that's cute. Yeah, like it's pretty Frogger. bad. It's pretty bad when the cops like ring their bell and go, oh, cool man, real Frogger, you know. <laughs> so um, Still. this is how we made it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Apparently, like half of half of Dig thinks we should be arrested for this. Yeah, someone sent a, an email to the cops and said, I can't believe because they didn't realize like Austin. Like, you guys been ever been to Austin? Like, it's a cool town. They're like, hey, yeah. So we made it out of like a tourist t-shirt and some cups and everything. And then we placed bets. There's some bet. We're on a betting spree or something. Um, we see how many times we can get it back and forth across the street. And everyone said one. And we, it actually was like 10. And then eventually a, a white SUV ran it over. Um, but it survived. Uh, these, they're, pr they're pretty tough. So um, yeah. Uh, the TV Be Gone, uh, fun little device. Uh, you know, it's fun to turn off TVs. And uh, we thought it would be more fun if we added more LEDs. <laughs> like 12 of them, and added more power. So this one can turn off a TV up to like 90 feet away. And uh, the battery lasts like a really long time. Yeah. And the how-to is on make, and it's available on Destructibles. And uh, it's, it's really fun. And then there's another one. Uh, let's say if you don't want to like aim your thing around and like, you know, look crazy, um, you can build it inside of a hat. So uh, yeah. It's hard to see, but you can switch, switch over to the, uh, to the computer, the internal. Internal? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, so that's the hat on the outside. It's the hat underneath. So um, it's kind of fun to walk around in your favorite electronics store and turn off things. And this is part of kind of a bigger project. Um, you know, if you've gone to computer shows like CES, they used to have like fun stuff, and now they just have big LCD screens. That's all they're selling. So I thought it'd be kind of fun. To, I don't know if someone would do it. I mean, maybe I, I would laugh about it, maybe write about it. But like to put it in a helium balloon and have this kind of pointed down all day, kind of, kind of just like with the breeze, like 90 feet. Yeah, turn it off. Yeah, kind of fun. Um, Lego is another neat company that uh, th their latest round of robots, uh, the firmware, you can do anything you want with it. They didn't do that before. They do that now. And so this is their new. Um, next kit. And people have just been doing weird things with Legos anyways, turning them into USB drives. This is a Lego vending machine. <laughs> so, like, you can get the stuff. You can, uh, um, and the, the Lego community has done a really good job of sharing all the, the, the programming behind it. You can play Connect Four versus uh, Legos. Yeah. Apparently it's good. Line falling robot. And um, things are starting to, to advance even more. And we're going to talk a little bit about the future and what's changing. Well, uh, there's the commoditization of the hardware. There's the software that's that's free. Lego and uh, there's open projects that you build everything virtually, and then you know which bricks you need. So we're starting to see that that might be something that happens in the near future with some of the electronics and, and some of the other um, projects that people build. So again, going back to more building stuff and how you you can get involved. Um, well, everything is made in like Chinese sweatshops now, um, like this one. And that's kind of bad because it means that, again, it's like, it's kind of like you open stuff up and it's really complicated and weird. But there's also some side effects. And one of the really nice side effects, and again, this goes back to um, Mousehammer's talk earlier, is that stuff is so cheap that 
Like if you if you break if you hack it and break it, it doesn't matter because it was ten dollars, a ten dollar camcorder, twenty dollar camcorder. It's like, who cares? Like you can f firmware hack it and like, you know, if you mess it up and you break it, and anyone who has a PlayStation Portable has tried to do firmware upgrades and messed up, you understand this is kind of tragic. Cause it's like a two hundred dollar device, but with you know, um, confiscation of hardware, you know, you can go in there and. and mess with stuff like you know he messed with this digital camera and made it into a, a kite aerial photography rig. Um, a really popular project that I think is great is and a lot of people here probably have one of these is the uh, WRT54G from Linksys. So for example again you know cheap um, electronics like certain electronics are so cheap you can get an ARM core for nothing. Um, inside this chip is an actual Linux computer and that does all the routing. It was actually it was totally practical for me to do this. And because it's running Linux, it's open source. And because it's open source, I had to give away the information. And because I gave away the information, people started building communities where you can like share information on how to improve your router. And that's kind of neat. Like again, you know, you don't need to actually know electronics, have an electrical engineering degree to get in and start messing with hardware and like screwing around with that. So that's kind of nice. It's, it's, a, it's nice that firmware is, is, you know, it's possible to upgrade firmware for so cheap, especially with, you know, open source tools. You know, iPod Linux, again, it's, you know, you can do stuff like this. You know, even five years ago, this would have been really difficult. Um, and, you know, another thing that's, that's going to be interesting to see in the next five to ten years is just as, you know, ten years ago, a Pentium computer, 100 megahertz Pentium, cost about $1,000, and a CD burner, one speed, was like 400 bucks, and it was really delicate and it broke. Um, and now it's like, you can get a Linux computer for nothing. Again, it's, like, it's so commodified, it's so cheap. Well, you know, this machine, like the one on the left, is a PCB router. It's, it's actually about like this big. It's not too big. And the one on the right is a mini mill. And so you could theoretically, just as laser printers are worth 5,000, 10,000 now, they're only a couple hundred bucks, it could be that, you know, one day this fab revolution that people are talking about, these could be in your home. You could buy this at Sears. So you could download open source information on how to build a USB charger and then press print and it'll print out the case on the mini mill and it'll print out the circuit board and then you order some parts from Amazon. Amazon currently is selling like mechanical and electronic components. They're, they're trying to get into that market and like do this stuff at home. So it's kind of nice like, you know, do it yourself fabrication. You know, it's incredibly cheap, on the fly. You know, you could compile stuff at home. That's kind of cool. CD-ROM burners, remember they were like $5,000 and then they were cheaper. Uh, laser printers, um, it was like, too expensive for anyone to have. Um, I use a laser cutter to laser etch this Tarsier from Unix in a nutshell on the back of my, my power book. It's a, it used to be a, like a $30,000 piece yeah, of equipment. It now it's like, like 10 k It's 10 k You can get an Epilog Mini for $10,000 and it's 18 by 12. It can cut through wood, acrylic, vinyl, anything you, you want to get. So, I mean, you can, you can do a lot of really cool stuff and you're actually starting to see people, I know people who are buying them and putting them in their basements. I mean, it's expensive toy, but, you know. It's not more expensive than a car. And other examples, um, Google has Google Earth, and like it's not really clear what Google's doing by like I don't know what they're doing, but they keep like releasing some interesting things. So um, what was that? <laughs> they real the world, yeah. Um, they do own the world. Um, but there's some interesting tools that they have, like uh, Google Earth. You can start to put your own buildings in there, and it's like okay, that's interesting. They bought a company uh, called SketchUp, and you can it's like a really neat rapid prototyping environment and it's free on Mac and PC. So people are building what they're going to put in their homes and they take before and after pictures and we're getting to the point where, oh wow, you could actually build an entire house and once the, the glue, the, the software that will tie the, the electronic drawings to what the physical hardware is, you'll pull a lever and you can get the stuff delivered to you. Uh, all of our projects in Make, we're going to try to do a SketchUp version. So if you want to learn how to build um, we have a, like a potato cannon, which is really fun. So you take a taser and a big piece of <laughs> PVC pipe, and we're going to show how to uh, do it, it like step by step via 3D. So you can like modify different pieces. And where it's going, uh, this is a milling machine. Multi massive multiplayer online games like World of Warcraft and even the user-created communities of Second Life. There's an open source tool called uh, Oogle, or is it Oggle? Oggle. Oggle. Yeah, Oggle. And you can get the the geometric shapes out of uh, using OpenGL. And you can get the shapes out, and like this guy made a sheep, so he like built a sheep in the virtual world. Um, that's what it looks like, and then he milled it out of foam. So we're, it, there's some early indications. Someone built an entire city, and then this is printed out on a 3D printer. So we're getting close to being able to sh get the parts to you that it won't cost as, as much as it does now. Like it costs more sometimes to ship something from Amazon than the actual stuff, or wherever. Um, and that kind of leads to the the the, the future of what else out there needs to be open sourced. And like one example that I like to use is uh, there's a really big problem with the mortality rate of infants in like the rest of the world. 
and the equipment, they're called baby warmers, the equipment out there is expensive, it's hard to get shipped out there, so a doctor came up with uh, an inexpensive way to do it using like regular light bulbs. So she actually sketched out this design and you would use regular light bulbs, it would dim, and the mortality rate cut in half. And so these plans are getting shared, they're getting distributed, they're using local materials. There's, there's, like, there's really good reasons to do a lot of this. And like, the trick is, like, how do we get people involved? And like, my trick is like, do something with an iPod, because like, everyone's like, oh, I need to do something with my iPod. But like, eventually, this is something that people might start to think about with other things. So like, voting machines, like, why isn't this open source? Why isn't there paper receipts too? Um, water purification, medical equipment, public transportation. Like, do you think of open source hardware projects out there that would just benefit everyone uh, there's a neat project uh, that they're deploying out in South Africa that it's a merry-go-round and as kids uh, spin around the merry-go-round, it's a water pump and it pumps all the water up. So the kids are playing, the water gets pumped, and they also sell advertising on the sides. So there's, there's yeah, so there's things like that. So um, some resources because we're going to open up for questions and also afterwards come up. Of course, make, um, you know, it, just send me an email, phil at fill at fill at 2600.com and I'll give everyone a copy, a digital copy of the first issue of make. So there you go. Um, popular Science has an H2O section, uh, How To 2.0, which is good, of course, 2600. Um, make website, Hackaday, uh, Instructables. This is one of the few places right now that's kind of wrapping a lot of this and putting it in one place. You can put your projects, like any project, even a software project, just try it out, instructables.com, and there's a make group so you can see the type of projects that people are putting in there. Like right now, a lot of the projects are kind of weird, like there's a taser glove, so speaking of tasers earlier, uh, it's kind of neat. Um, Flickr, if you, search, if you look for tags for how-to and DIY, uh, we have a make Flickr photo pool, and it's kind of like a light version of Instructables, like people just put up their build photos, and you can see like step-by-step -step of all the things they're building. And uh, Spark Fun Electronics is where I sent my paycheck to, like on a regular basis. Like all the things you see here, like Spark Fun cells, they have a lot of neat electronics. And uh, Fidgets, that's where the RFID readers are from, and, uh, and also the little RFID parts. And they also have a deal with uh, the guy who wrote uh, RFID hacks, RFID projects, and uh, that's a really good book to check out too if you're into the RFID project. So this is uh, Ada's information, this is mine, and I think we've got a few minutes for um, yeah. questions, and if uh, there's no, uh, and yeah, afterwards. We'll give it to every person has a question. Yeah, everyone has yeah. A, good, a good question. Gets a copy good, of Make. <laughs> good questions, get a copy of the latest issue of Make. Yeah. So ask a good question. So, yeah, I'll put that right there. There you yeah, go. we'll just flip between them really fast. It's like you get the it's like a strobe. <laughs> yeah. Like left eye, right eye. So yeah. mm -hmm. All right, so questions? Questions. We've got a few minutes. Questions. Yeah, oh, yeah. Or if you have good ideas for open source hardware projects, it's yeah, time to either or. Them. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm actually in the process of doing a couple, and somebody donated some space to me, and I took all the junk computers and stuff, and I've got some kids that I'm actually doing this. Um, and, and I was getting discouraged by the miniaturization because <laughs> there's so much hardware. And mm. So this is great because there's extra information I didn't have about how to hack things that are almost, you know, surface mount kind well, of things. Well, so what's really neat is like, yeah, stuff is getting small. It's getting miniaturized because the te technology allows for it. But on the other hand, um, I think even SparkFun has a kit for um, temperature controlling a Black & Decker reflow uh, Black and Decker reflow oven, like you get a right. toaster oven, right. and they have a little kit that allows you to temperature control it and do a reflow. So you yeah. can get like a five thousand dollar reflow oven in your kitchen. Just don't eat at because it's lead. Right. So don't. But you can use that to like desolder chips and again, you <laughs> no, know, yeah. like no. John used something similar. Yeah. I mean, there's technologies out there, right. and again, with the internet, it's easier to find them. Right. So. so, but actually, my, my question was going to be, um, what's the best way to find people in my area? Because I'm I'm hooking up with, of course, the internet's great and and make and all of that. Um, do you, is there a venue for like finding out who's close to you? Yeah, because I'm in the Research Triangle Park area in North Carolina, and what I, would be, you know, I know a lot of people that are hundreds of miles away from me. I don't know a lot of people that are within 30 miles. Yeah, what I tend to uh, suggest is um, go to Flickr, of course, and just post up a project with a bunch of tags because you can put your location. Go to Instructables, put your location. And these groups are self-forming. Um, the Make Forums, there's always a call for makers. Like people say, like, hey, I'm in, I'm in uh, Indiana or whatever. Um, I, I'm looking to do a project with someone, and like it's like it's like matchmaker, but not really. Like okay, they're not so dating. Like you can search on address. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like ham radio oh, I had that. groups okay. too, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And like upcoming.org, there's like there's events in like a lot of areas, and we also have an event listing on Make that we try to put uh, out there. In everyone can send in everything, so put your event in there too, or what, or even if it's just a meeting. Right. So, okay. Right. Great. Thanks. Hi. Um, you talk a lot about open source hardware. Um, 
how does that relate to patents? And how would you protect your open source hardware from being patented by somebody else? Um, you can't patent something that's been released into the public domain. That's just, I mean, if you look at the way the patent system works, once you've released something, it's nobody, I mean, you'd you, they could and you'd have to fight it in court, which is unfortunate, but same thing, hap you know, same thing happens with open source software. You know, Linksys had to be, I think they had to be convinced to release it. Um, but you can't patent stuff that's been open sourced. Just, I, mean, I mean, that's fine. You know, it's, that's the, that's the trade-off. Creative you, Commons. You could publish it in the Gazette, right? For 50 bucks. The patent office has a Gazette that you can publish things in. Sure. That, you can do that. That would, that would. You can publish it anywhere. You can publish it anywhere. You just put it online. You just have to show prior art. But then you might have to defend it in court. You have to defend it in court no matter what. Okay. That, yeah. That's good. Are you familiar with the RepRap project? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool stuff. And is that uh, already covered by patents, existing patents? I don't know offhand. You'll have to look into it. I'm sorry. I, I, I have know. no clue either. Yeah. Ask him. <laughs> Thank <Sorry>. you. <laughs> I'm uh, real curious if you guys have made any attempts to connect with uh, free energy device creators and different inventors. I'm going <laughs> to the Tesla <laughs> Tech Convention. Uh, which is coming up in a, in a week or so. And uh, I was wondering if there's a resource that I could use to try and convincingly uh, promote uh, open sourcing their, their hardware and their devices before the website crashes, they might be, be visit them, and uh, all of a sudden the technology disappears. I think they should open source it because there's a lot of skeptics, of course, about free energy because it's never free. Um, so, so they should really, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like, they should post up an Instructable or, like, you know, a how-to on Flickr or something. But as far as uh, convincing them, there's just a ton of benefits. I, I think because, like, we get a lot of emails and we might do an issue that kind of looks at some of these free energy ideas and concepts and, like, you know, how it works and how it doesn't work or, like, all the, and everything in between. So have them email me. I mean, like, we'll, we're going to be covering this on Make uh, early next year. So I would have them email you at the same address you gave? For yeah, that's fine. September? That's fine. But yeah, yeah, they definitely should open source their ideas. Okay. Thanks. How's it going? Yo. Hey. Um, not really a question, just a kind of a comment. Uh, I've been playing with a lot of this stuff for, you know, like uh, pick chips, things like that, all these projects. Um, a real good source for all these old electronics are old uh, ham radio fest. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, ARRL.org, they have a list of, you know, times, dates, places, all this. And, you know, yeah. you're knee deep in old video recorders and camcorders and stuff. So, yeah, yeah like the, the Dayton Ham Fest. Definitely. Oh, yeah. I mean, Ham Radio, like, they've done all this stuff already. We're just expanding it. I mean, they, this is all, if you've done Ham Radio, this is all old to you. You're like, oh, yeah, I did that, did that, did that. They're, I mean, I mean, it's, not, it's true. But we're just trying to create a larger community. So, yeah, go to Ham Radio Fest and meet people there. and. Yeah. Get parts for like super cheap. Yeah. Model train guys too. They make their own printed. They yeah. have like they're like the best printed circuit board guys. Like definitely. Who'd have thought? That's all. Cool. Uh, no, thanks. Hi. Hey. Yo. Uh, do you guys take uh, receive submissions? Like if I have a project that I'm currently working on, yeah, sure. I can just submit it. Because I'm actually building something. I've been building a lot of uh, guitar effects and uh, and. and yeah. Things of the people sort, love that so. stuff, and there's there's communities for people who do that. Yeah, yeah it's great. Absolutely. Musicians okay. are like the new ham radio hackers absolutely. of this decade, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Thank you. Send an email, and we pay too. <laughs> Hi. Uh, when trying to get information from manufacturers regarding hardware and how to access it, one of the common excuses or reasons they give, especially in anything RF related, is that they implement regulatory compliance in software. And if they opened that, everybody would be in regulatory yeah. violation, and then it would be a mess, and they would be liable. Yeah. Do you have yeah. any comment on that kind of thing, or ways well, that's been dealt with? I can only give examples. Oh, we have to stop right now. We got to uh, go. go. The only example that I can give real quick is Roomba. Like, like once you mod this and everything, it could push a grandma down the stairs. <laughs> and so it's like, it's really new. Like, who knows? Like, and like, you violate the three laws of robotics um. once you. Just do that, lie so. to them, like tell them you're a student and you need it. I mean, like make up. I mean, you're a hacker, social engineer, right? Let's do, yeah, good. All right, okay. Thank you. Right, thanks.